Yo, what is going on guys? It's Cryptic TMG and I'm back with a brand new video. This time we're going to be talking F1 2020 and I have not played an F1 game properly probably since F1 2014 was the, the last time I really really played the F1 game and um, yeah just wanted to sort of see what has changed and um, what I think you know could be improved upon in the F1 games and I, I get that the F1 game is been ridiculously successful especially with the esports side of things and to be honest they've done a great job with um just bringing together the community and the way that esports has just taken off is it's really been something with the f1 games man even with the real drivers getting involved um f1 has definitely carved out its position in the sort of sim racing community um but yeah um first thoughts on it you know the thing i used to struggle with especially with the last few titles was Probably I think F1, I bought like F1 2016, I bought 2017, and after that I just said no, it just definitely just wasn't for me. I think I did try F1 2015 as well, but that was just terrible. But um, yeah, I always sort of struggled with the, the weight of the cars, they felt a little bit too light. But um, yeah, I can say with this F1, definitely the, the how the cars feel, actually feel a lot better. I still think there is little things that need to be improved upon in terms of the handling but um all in all it feels much much better much more towards the sort of the wheel weight that we used to have back on like f1 2013 2012 that sort of thing um definitely more impressed with how the game feels in general and of course um from the last time i've played it they've taken on so much ideas and so much things that people were calling from 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 years ago now you can build your own team your own livery and stuff like that i think definitely f1 has um really listen to or codemasters really listen to the community on that one man because that is something i remember from back in the day people really really wanted in the game man and i think that that's been delivered um the career mode looks pretty great i haven't tried doing a career career mode myself but i i have watched a few people's career mode and the career mode definitely looks interesting looks like a little bit different from what it used to be now there's a little bit more you know involvement you've got your own team now you can really like fight to get your team up there and i think it's just just a whole better feeling in the career mode because it can get a bit stale a bit boring once you once you've built your car up to be the best car there is isn't really much to do but at least if it's your your own team working from the ground up it's, it's much different man so um yeah i i, I like the Im, Im, implementation of the the driver stats that was something that i personally thought of ages ago when i, I used to think why have they not got driver stats so each driver if he does go to a different team can still perform like his actual personality would instead of just being in a generic car and being only able to follow the speed of the car um so yeah pretty pretty happy with that man i think that's a, a good way to go definitely a step forward in making it a little bit more realistic in the career career mode side of things and you want to actually feel like you're racing against the best and even if you know one of the drivers do have a transfer for instance if max verstappen decided to go to mclaren you want to know that he's still going to be a quick driver even though he might not have the best car so um yeah i i really like what they've done with that now for me um the esports side of things obviously is probably the most important the the competitive gameplay um yeah and as i said these guys who are who are doing that performing at a high level all these guys are very good drivers man don't don't get it twisted because it's f1 and I know a lot, a lot of people, especially a lot of people from the, the sim racing world, I'll say iRacing, R Factor 2, ACC, any games like that. I know a lot of people sort of look down upon F1 at times, but I do think a lot of them guys are are fast on F1. Um, just look at David Tanitza, he came on ACC and he was perfectly fine and able to compete near the front. So um, I, I don't think it's a, it's a, you know, I don't think it's a thing where you know guys are only just fast on the the arcade the f1 game so to speak but I, I i can't hide my disappointment and i i just feel like especially with you know with playing acc and seeing what they're able to do with the authentic feeling of the actual cars from um the gt challenge uh intercontinental european championships that actual feeling of driving the pacific cars i feel like so much could be done with f1 and i feel like they're actually missing a trick but like in my in my sort of um in my opinion just imagine an f1 game with laser scan tracks and um, with a better physics model and i don't mean you know make the game more sim doesn't mean make the game harder i actually believe it probably end up being easier when i played a set of course of the original one i tried out the 2017 ferrari 
That car felt amazing on that game. Amazing. The feeling of weight, everything. It just it was perfect for me personally. And I I sort of have that stuck in my brain of how an F1 game should feel. And if it felt anything like that on these F1 games, I'm telling you, with laser scan tracks, with just you know, certain things just um implemented into the game. For instance, when I watch, you know, guys drive around on F1 2020 in the wet, it just looks like there's totally too much grip. It doesn't look like you have to, you know, avoid driving offline on the wet parts and stuff like that. It just, you know, there's so many things I feel like they can implement into the game. Cooling your tyres down by driving on the wet part of the track, staying off of the white lines completely, staying off of the curbs completely, especially in F1 cars who tend to, once they get sideways, that is it, gone. You know, I'd love to see that sort of thing implemented into F1, um, into an F1 game where... You know, even, you know, we had the Austrian Grand Prix where the curbs are absolutely dismantling in people's cars. I'd love for them to put little things like that just to make it that little bit more authentic, man. And I feel like the game would be, I honestly believe an F1 game, let's say, taken, taken seriously to the point of what maybe ACC's done, I feel like the game would be untouchable. I feel like it would be the best sim game you can play. And the reason why I say that is because F1 has got the one thing that every other game struggles to you know to do and that is online you can get the cars or you can get the cars almost identical equal because of its uh because of the way it's done with the you know one car model for the online sort of thing no other game really has that i know they've had that on iRacing and whatnot but again the setups on iRacing are quite complex and most of the top teams always sort of you know prevail because they have the guys who are making the setups and although i do believe f1 should be a little bit more in depth with the setup i don't believe this 111 uh, anti robot thing which by the way has been going on since f1 2011 that's nine years ago I, I feel like i feel like they definitely need to put a little bit more emphasis into the setup and make it actually make sense man you know make make the setups actually make sense i'd love to get on an F1 game and have to sit down and jump on Motec and actually see wow this can make a difference to save entire life and actually have to you know you can actually set your car up to save your tires by five six laps or whatever the, the, the case may be um, I feel like that would just add so much more value to the game and right now it's sort of you kind of have to know the sort of F1 way how to drive and you know that's always a little bit disappointing for for people who still have a vague interest in the game it's never going to be my my go-to or my number one or anything like that but i enjoy watching it i enjoy watching the competitive scene and stuff like that but um i i honestly believe they're missing the trick man i've i believe there is so much potential in the f1 game um and as i said by making the game more sim doesn't necessarily mean making the game harder i don't believe you know simulation to mean hard i just think simulation is just a simulation of what real life is you know are these cars harder to drive now than they were in 2014 no they're probably a lot easier to drive now because they got tons more grip you know tons more downfall so yeah i, I would love to see it man i'd love to see someone else apart from codemasters given a chance um take the base of what they have now i think the base is great and with f1 with the tire strategies and stuff i just think a game that was properly properly detailed would be like out of this world and for me a game like that that would be my number one because let's remember formula one is my number one motorsport i watched formula one before i watch uh, um, gt threes before i watch anything moto gp i watch formula one first so um yeah that's that's basically what i would love to see man as I said, F1 has always been a fun game. And to be honest, if I was to jump on with a couple of friends, I'm sure we'd just have a laugh, man. I'm sure we would definitely have a laugh. But um, I, I just I just honestly believe, especially, you know, when we had the lockdown with all this coronavirus stuff going on, and um, we had a lot of the live events with the real life drivers, it kind of just, I don't know, it, it, it wasn't really a good look for F1 2019, I think it was at the time. It wasn't really a good look and when you looked at sort of the, the real life drivers jumping on ACC, jumping on R Factor, the driving obviously just looked a lot more natural. It looked a lot more natural whereas on F1 there is a certain type of way you have to drive and I, I just think that, um, yeah, I, I believe with a more polished game, more focus on the details man, like why, why is the official F1 game 
not get any laser scan tracks. Like, it cannot be a shortage of money. They've got it. Okay, Codemasters have got the backing of F1. They've got the money. You know, the money is not a problem. They should be pushing for stuff like that. They should be pushing to improve their game year on year out to a point where no one can touch them. You know what I mean? And I feel like the reason why they have, you know, such a big fan base is because it's Formula One. Everyone, you know, who's into racing, well, 95% of people love Formula One cars, you know? So, I just feel like that's something that they, they need to look at, man. I don't know if they will, I don't know if they ever will. I know for them it probably feels like a, a, women, a, a, willing, willing, a winning formula at the moment. But, um, yeah, just, just imagine that. Just imagine Formula One in the body of the way you see ACC how crazy would that be imagine f1 laser scan tracks everywhere every single track laser scanned perfectly done all the bumps in the right place everything imagine when it starts raining and then you know driving offline becomes sketchy having to drive completely differently when when the rain comes when i see people playing f1 um in in the rain they're not driving differently they're just driving slower but they're driving exactly the same way. When you play at ACC and it starts to rain, you actually have to drive a little bit different. You know, you can't even get in your foot down on the straights and stuff like that. You can't really just plant your foot down no matter how much traction you want to put on. I would love to see that in the F1 game, managing to use um, wet racing lines to, to straighten up the car and stuff like that. All those things I think by now should be implemented because I still feel like we are playing on the base carcass of f1 from 2014 that's how it feels like you know it still feels like the same things sort of work the same driving style sort of works and um yeah uh, for me personally i i can just i can just imagine what an f1 game would look like with everything really polished man i think it'd be an insane insane but not not to say that this is a bad game at all i definitely think it has improved the, the handling feels better to me because the cars used to feel so sort of floaty and just very very light they used to feel just just weird i just that's what literally made me stop playing the game you know before i got into any acc project cars or anything i was si simply and only an f1 that's all i used to play that's all i used to play and i really enjoyed like f1 2010 or well, 2011 was bugged but 2012, 2013, you know, those are my go-to F1 games, man. They were amazing. But um, I fell out of love of it pretty much after 2014. And then it just, I kept on trying to buy them. And I just couldn't, they just couldn't hold my interest anymore, man. And yeah, for, for me, being slightly older now, obviously I'm still a massive F1 fan. And I still look at the game, but yeah, it's just, um, it's, it's, it's there. It's, it's like 50% there. And if, if they brought the realism without, you know, making it super, super hard. But I think like if they did sort of bring the realism and sort of have a nice little, you know, set up page where not everything is just 1, 1, 11, 11 or whatever the hell they're doing now with the setups. I know it's something to do with the anti-roll bars, 11 and 1, 1 and 11, whatever. If they actually, you know, had a, had a more in-depth set up page. And you could actually go into it and the setups actually made a difference a big difference i think the game would be great but that's my time man script to tng like and subscribe hit the notification bell to get my videos first and if you've got any comments on the f1 game or any things you lot want to school me on anything that i've missed feel free to leave, do so in the comments it's cryptic tng and peace